say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hi. What are you smiling about, Mrs. Farmer? I like this new area. This is nice. You know what? This is the beginning of our summer sizzle series, although it's not really sizzling temperature-wise Yeah, we need today. summer. We need we summer. We do need summer. <laughs> People have been asking for us to grill. We're going to do some grilling. Now, we're not going to quit cowboy cooking. We're not going to quit cooking in the cabin. First things first. Mm -hmm. It's Happy Mother's Day. That's right. Happy Mother's Day. I've got the best mother in the world. So do I. They're tied. You know what? They are tied. Yes. There are, well, there are mothers. That's right. And they they're were, special. You know, they were gabbing on the phone together today, too, so. They do talk they on the talk phone They talk a lot, which is, I like that suite. You know, what can you say about our best mothers in the world? Yeah, they're perfect. They're fabulous. You think That's about right. you. So many memories. We're going to visit with them just a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But we have a busy, busy time on the farm here. Puppies. We'll oh, visit yeah. with them a little bit. Uh, Maybell's boys are growing up. Yes, they are. And in just a minute, before it gets dark, this has happened twice now. The bees? The bees. The other day I looked up there, there's a swarm. Jay comes in, here's a little bit of footage of that we took on the phone. And today, in fact, I think he just pulled up, Alan is here to talk about a swarm of bees that we have right up on the hill right now. I'm gonna try to take this swarm now, what is a swarm? We'll explain here in a minute, but your hive, when it gets full, if a queen hatches, they mm -hmm. have a royal cell, a queen cell, right. and it hatches out, one of the queens will leave and some of the bees will leave with her. That's the way they grow and expand and other mm -hmm. hives become available. Let's go visit with Alan, talk about this particular swarm, which is only 30, 40 yards from here. Just like a football. Just like a football. <laughs> That's what it looks and like. And then we're gonna come back with our first grilling experience in this particular area. And let me tell you what, we've had steaks a million ways, but I don't know if we've ever had one this delicious. And we got a few oysters. Maybe you're not an oyster fan, but if you are, we got a quick and special treat. But right now, let's go check the swarm with the bee dude. All right, we're just getting ready to have dinner. And Nikki looked out the window. The other day, I looked out the window and I saw something like this. Today, we look out here and we see a swarm. Yep. So what am I going to do but call the bee dude? We're going to put them in a box. Put them in a box. Let's talk about this. Now, a lot of times people will see something like this. This happens. You know what happens. I know what happens. These are a precious commodity. They pollinate. They, they play an important role in the ecosystem. They're very calm right now because they're swarming and protect. They've come out of the hive. A new queen or the old queen has come out, mm -hmm. and they're protecting her. A lot of times people say, oh, there's a bunch of bees. Get the can of raid. First thing they want to do is spray them. First of all, they're not going to hurt you when they're doing this. Tell us what a swarm is and, and what's going on here. They're here because there's the hive has got enough bees in it to support it, and the workers have decided that uh, there's enough of us in here, and let's move out and start another colony. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a healthy thing. I've got a really thriving hive up there. Yeah. So they grow. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's time for somebody to move out. It's normal. I mean, it's, it's normal. Uh, what a lot of people do is they'll, they'll, they'll split their hives to keep, prevent swarming is what they'll do. This is the perfect thing that you want if you want to start your own process. Yeah. What do you do? What would you suggest I do tomorrow? Tomorrow, what you need to do is go purchase you either a hive or a nuke box. More than likely, they're probably gonna have nuke, uh, hives there. And basically set it up in here, we'll, we'll cut it, set it on top, and the bees will go down in the hive, and that, that's it. I mean, it's, it's real simple to get a swarm of bees. So if yes. you provide them a home, they're gonna say, hey, gonna this go. is what we're looking they're for. They're gonna go. 
So how many frames would you put in there to begin uh, with? It'll, it'll probably be a 10 frame box is probably okay. going to be. There's enough bees between these two bunches right here that, uh, you know, 10 frame, they'll work out good in 10 frame. Just put some, put a feeder on them. Now something that's kind of unique here, she, she spreads her scent out on, on this, this mm -hmm. one. Now, if that was still up there, this is not two swarms. This is probably this is one swarm, this is one and, swarm and the weight of them that's falling down. Over. Now, non-aggressive. I mean, here I am, right here. You know, I could I could actually touch them. Yeah, you could reach in there and touch them. And there's you nothing. Want. You know, they're not aggressive. They're not guarding their honey per se. No, there's right nothing now. for them to protect right now. Right now, in one of these two balls of bees right here, uh, the queen's in the middle of it, and basically that's that's kind of what they're protecting. But there's nothing for them really to defend. They say location, location, location. Mm -hmm. It seems like this is a pretty good spot up here. This little blue box is going from the other day. That's thriving up here. Maybe try to get one more going. Take another one, set up our next set of other boxes. See what happens. Thank you so much for stopping by. You're Help welcome, Bob. Because he's the bee dude. <laughs>All right, we're back. They're still here. Thank goodness. Yep. Now, what they're doing is sending out scouts now trying to find a new home. So they haven't found one yet. So we're going to provide one, correct? Yep. yep. We're going to put them in this box right here. All right. So basically, you have some protection. Yeah. So better safe than sorry. So I'm going to stand know. off to the side, as usual, right. <laughs> and watch you do what you do. So, you know, and again, these are non-aggressive in this type fashion, but again, you have heard of people oh, yeah. getting yeah. stuck. Yeah, yeah, and all it takes is for one or two to get them fired up, you know. Yeah. They, they uh, release that uh, pheromone, you know, when they pull that stinger out, there's a pheromone that goes off. Yeah, I'm going to trim some of these branches off the end right here so I can get that box, and I'll probably just cut it up here, then just take it and leave the box and just lay it in there. Right. Then that'll give me room to work. To, to get, get them down? Yeah. And they're like, hey, what do we got here? Probably what I'll do is I'll let them get in there for a little bit, and uh, then I'll go ahead and start cutting these down up here and lay them in there with it and give them a little bit, and then I'll just shake them off. What I'll do is put this lid on here, uh -huh. and then let them calm down for a little bit and see what happens. I'm gonna open this up and put these other frames back in here. All right. Put the inner cover back on, and then we'll take it up there and put it in place. Now, we're going to get these stakes started. Remember the first time we did this was at what? Six, seven, eight? Before the show ever, ever started. Right. Long time ago. And I hope you like garlic. These are these wonderful. Are really garlicky. But the flavor is absolutely... You, you see some peppers here, okay? Now, those are poblano peppers. And we got some banana peppers here, too. Now, you can use those if you'd like. If you like a little sweet taste, you can mix them together. We're going to take some garlic, probably four cloves, okay. a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to put it in a food processor till we make a paste. Strip steak was on sale today. And if you remember when we were cutting up the cow, right. one of the fellows there said his favorite steak is the strip steak. Well, they were on sale today, so that's yeah, where we're gotta going. Yeah, got to try. So what is that pepper, garlic, and coarse ground sea salt going to taste like on this steak? Amazing. It's, it defies explanation. All right. It brings something that you can't even hardly explain. You don't get the heat mm -hmm. so much because when you grill it, it cooks the heat out, but you have that nice flavor along with the salt, along with the garlic. It is astounding. Now, we're, gonna, we're not going to put any black pepper on this. And typically, it's black pepper, garlic, salt. Right. We don't need pepper. We don't need black got pepper. pepper. We got pepper. <laughs> we got garlic. So let's go ahead and get started on this. All right, Nikki, if you will, go ahead and cut that up so we can put that in a food processor. We're going to cut this up. We're going to make our paste. This is just a sweet pepper here. It'll add a little flavor. We got sweet and we got hot. And then we'll take four cloves of garlic. I'm tired of buying a grill and it lasting about a year and a half. You're right. Then everything That's falls right. apart. So I talked to Faye, mm -hmm. our friend at Housewarming. I said, what's going on out there? I need something that's going to last. 
So she started talking to me about Napoleon grills, mm -hmm. and I started doing some research. Now they're a little bit more expensive, but do you want to buy one for four hundred dollars every other year, or do you want to pay a little bit more and have something to last you ten years? So do a little research, see what you like. There's a lot of them out there, but we're going to try this one. And we're getting close, aren't we? Yes, I got my stuff in here. You need All olive right. oil. Now, if you will, Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. if you'll pour just a little bit of olive oil in there. All right. Tell me when. And that's probably good. All right. Okay, if you'll pop that top on there, and let's get that at, into a fine paste. Good. Now, as uh, we go on, it's going to get darker. Mm -hmm. That's what happens at night. That's right. I can still eat and dark. Now, notice over Nikki's shoulder, you're going to see some basil, oregano, more basil, and some rosemary, and another type of basil. And as the season moves along, we're going to have more and more of that because it's so nice to have that growing outside. And right. you just, when you need some, you just pull it out, nice pop it on fresh. stuff, and you're there. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to take some of this concoction right here. And all we're going to do, and we're going to put a generous amount on each side. And then we're going to take some coarse ground sea salt. And I mean, we're going to go pretty heavy on the sea salt. The flavor of the pepper subsides mm -hmm. with the cooking. The garlic stands out, the salt stands out, but really the pepper becomes this unique, wonderful side thing going on. It's, it's just absolutely phenomenal. So here's what it's going to look like. You're going to think, wow, that's an odd looking steak. Again, a bunch of sea salt. And again, we're not going to do any black pepper. The garlic's already in there. I think we got enough pepper. All right, let's set this aside, put this in the refrigerator, and we're going to be right back with an appetizer. Surf and turf, right? Mm -hmm. We Always. love oysters. Yes, we do. But we had, we stole this idea mm -hmm. the other night. We wanted to share it with you. We visited not too long ago all the good people at the governor's mansion. That's right. We didn't realize the history there, mm -hmm. the people's house, and the house, such interesting things happen there. It is. Remember Boro? I do. Love Boro. Such a nice guy. <laughs> he's been there a long time, and he's got so many interesting stories. But we did find out a little something that they did there, and I don't know where they got it, but it's worth sharing. Now, if you like oysters, how about a shooter? If you've never tried them, you might want to try it. That's right. Now, if you like, like a Bloody Mary mix, mm -hmm. Um, you can buy some of that pre-mix. Now, there's no alcohol in this, but if you want to do it yourself, it's this simple. We've got a little bit of V8, or if you've canned some of your own tomato juice, boom, you're already there. A little bit of a Worcestershire sauce, and just a tad, I mean, just a tad, or if you Yum. like it, of horseradish. Yum. If you want some hot sauce, if you want to spice it up just a bit, just a tad of hot sauce. Now we're going to take our oyster. We're going to scoop that out. I'm just going to do it with my fingers. Is that okay? That's fine. Since that's, that's yours. Mine. That's yours. That's mine. And your fingers are clean. I'm going to drop that in here. All right. Now, looky there. You need a piece of celery, don't you? Now, let's... Here's your little... Here's your stir. Isn't that stir. Cute? Get it all mixed up. Full chefs at the mansion. Is it Allison and, and uh, Tim? We have to give credit to yes. Allison and Tim. And that's what it looks like. So, just like that. Want one Those farm? are beautiful. Now, can I just stab my oyster and eat it? You can do whatever you want. You get like a Bloody Mary mm. and oyster all the same that time. Sounds, that's really good. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I like that. That was a cute idea they had. I like that. That was a great idea. Mm -hmm. To get our side up and going and ready, we just got some fresh asparagus from uh, Mac yep. at Elmwood Stock Farm. Looks We're great. We're going to take just a little bit of olive oil and drizzle over that. Okay. And a little salt and pepper. And we've got some center cut pieces of ham. I'm just going to lightly wrap around our asparagus. A little bit of salt and pepper? A little pepper. salt, a little pepper. All right. And just take half and just roll up in that piece of ham. Alrighty. We'll set that on the side. We're going to have that with our steak. And now it's probably time to talk about our moms. Okay. It being Mother's Day and all. Tell me right now, off the cuff. <laughs> we don't plan anything on this show. Okay. A memory from your mother that you've never told me. Something I've never told you? Something you've never told me. How about her laughing at me? For like I would, I remember being on the sidewalk and I'd like to jump rope barefoot. She always told me not to, and I stubbed my toe and it was bleeding. And she laughed. I mean, she tried not to laugh, but she still to this day doesn't admit that. But she would just start, I don't know, as long as she knew I wasn't that hurt, she'd pick me up and I could just see her. Laughing. I think there's more to that story. I think, not that she would overreact, 
to stumping your toe, but I think she was probably laughing at your overreaction because you probably wanted an ambulance and an airlift. That's right, that's right. You probably thought you should have, you know. Yeah, I mean, aid. she was a great mom. She'd come around the corner with her hand though and scare us. I know your mom has done that too, but she was. I mean, she was just the best mom ever. She still is. You know what? We're so lucky to have our moms and dads. And this was an interesting week last week. I'm going to talk about my mom in a minute, but there was kind of an ironic thing that happened. Your mm -hmm. father mm -hmm. had to have a procedure in the hospital right. to try to help him walk better. On that same weekend, we got to see little Sammy, Take our youngest. Step. So is that not ironic? That we yeah. see our parents getting older and right. then we see our grandbabies taking their first steps. So it's wonderful to see family and understand how life works. Right. And somebody who always taught me how life works is my mom. She had the hand too, though, you told she, me. Oh, she, mom would love to scare us. <laughs> we watched a movie one time. It was about this hand. It was by itself, and it would crawl. Yeah. I was terrified of these stupid <laughs> 1950s black and white movies uh -huh. and this creepy thing. Right. And she came out, and Debbie and I were watching. It was like, it was like you remember on um, New Year's Eve, they would have Creature Feature. Yeah, Creature Feature, yes. I didn't remember Creature Feature. So here comes this hand. Yeah. Next thing you know, Debbie and I were like, you know, just shaking, and we see this hand come up and run at his mom. And I love like, your mom. I love that. I love that. So tonight we're going to visit with your mom just a little bit. Okay. Um, we're going to, she made some pickles. They're amazing. One time. And these are quick and easy. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to them. But you'll get to see a little bit of Nikki and, and uh, just a quick recipe, not the whole segment. But this is Nikki's mom. Here she is right here. All right, we got the pickles cut up. Yes. Now you're going to make your concoction. Yes. Two and a half cups of sugar. All right. A cup of apple cider vinegar. All right. A tablespoon of the pickling spices. You sure we don't need more sugar, Grandma? Two and a half cups. This is really unusual. The whole process is because you're already taking something that's finished and you're kind of making something else out of it. Mm -hmm. So just bring that to a boil? Yeah. And it doesn't have to boil very long. Just bring it to a boil. It's getting ready to boil. It's coming. All right. Okay. Let's pray for a non-broken jar. Yeah. It didn't boil very long. Those pickles will probably cool that down. Now you see you've got that traditional pickle look with the pickling spices in the uh, classic jar. And so shake them up for seven days. Of course, yeah. they won't last. By the time, yeah. time, by the time they're chilled tomorrow, I'll be having me some dill slash sweet yes. pickles. Thank you, Grandma. I, I can't wait till these are chilled. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, our family lived out in the country, a mm -hmm. little more quiet, and mom was always telling stories. She was always making stuff up. Fantastic, wonderful stories to, to help us go to sleep. And here's mom with a story. She's quite the poet. She is quite the poet. And she knows it. Yes, she does. Because she's got all kinds of little awards and everything. And here's one she did recently about her grandma's cook stove. Hmm. Granny's cook stove. I remember Granny's cook stove and the warmth it used to bring the kettle come to boiling, and the song it used to sing. The smell of biscuits baking, hearty vegetables in a stew. From the garden, Granddad planted and then tended as it grew. There were fruit-filled pies and cobblers from the orchard on the hill, tasty golden crusted cornbread made from corn ground at the mill. Quite often on a Sunday, company would come to call, and the smell of chicken frying would come drifting through the hall. The women in the kitchen all helped Granny around the stove, while men folk gathered on the porch, children scampered to the grove. Winter, chilly mornings made it hard to face the day until Granny lit the cook stove and got breakfast on the way. As the ice and snows have melted, so too have passed the years. Granddad is gone and so is Granny. Meditation brings quiet tears. Still, I treasure every memory and to happy thoughts I cling as I remember Granny's cook stove and the warmth it used to bring. And that's a celebration of our moms. Yes, it is. And we love them dearly. And Dad's Father's Day is right around the corner, the corner so right. they're not going to escape. They, right. We're going to go after them, too. But it's about that time. Now let's go to the grill. Yeah.
Hey. Oh, yum. Now this is on the infrared side, so okay. that's a really... Oh, yum. Look at that. I love this grill. <laughs> now our asparagus. Now that is the perfect wow. steak to me. Now that's if for you. you want yours a little more done than that, that's fine. All right, now. Look at that. Mm. Mm. That is really I remember why I've, we ate that so often. Now, any place you go and you have a really good steak, they've got a really hot grill. And the key is to get it really done on the outside. You didn't cook it that long either. You don't have to. That was good. Look at the inside, look at the outside. That strip steak is amazing. That is a beautiful, beautiful piece of steak. And you taste that pepper? You don't taste the heat of the pepper. No, it's really good. It changes. I can't even explain. You just have to try it. It's this. really good. You have to trust us. I'm gonna try some asparagus. I'm gonna try some asparagus. Oh wow. Now earlier today, we took a little walk around the farm and visited. You can't believe how big Maybell's little Babies. boys are getting. They're getting big. They're getting big. And the puppies? <laughs> Let's go back and take a look at the puppies. You, you don't love those puppies, I love do you? every one of them. Aren't they're they all so I'm feeding them myself now. They're they love me. Let's take another bite of this. We'll be right back. Their human mommy is now giving them puppy food. Watch this. Watch this. What's that? Uh huh. <laughs> They've yet to learn table manners, but they are so sweet. Since we've got these big old dogs, we have not lost an animal. Knock no, on wood. You're right. But these are the best, sweetest animals. And, you know, there are different opinions out there. Some people say, do not pet them, do not interact with them, let them bond we with the sheep. We pet them. They can bond with the sheep. And me. bond with their mommies and daddies too. But look what beautiful little healthy fuzzballs. They're about to get their first round of worm medicine. Yeah, that's right. And they are so sweet. Here's that little boy. Here's, we're going to keep one little boy. Gonna He's going to be our front yard dog. <laughs> look at Isn't he cute? He I spoil him. Over you. I, am I getting it on me? We have to do, figure out a name for him. It's been a fun spring on the farm. The winter wasn't real bad. She's cleaning them up. She licks all their stuff up. <laughs> Nothing like puppies. Look at this cat right here. Too bad they don't get fed. What are you doing, little girl? Look at his tail. What are you doing, little girl? <laughs> what are you doing, little girl? You're not cute or anything. Let's go check on the calves. <laughs> now I want you to look how big, with just mama's milk, some hay, and now a little sweet pea. Now she has done well and she has taken care of both of these guys and she's taken them on as her own. But look at the difference again. This is just a, what, a week behind right. age-wise. But look at the body size and structure. Now the, the meat is completely different on the jersey. You guys better hurry up, your mama's eating it all. Uh -huh. They're afraid of us. Well, we're standing here. I know. All right, that's our visit for the farm. Are you getting hungry? I am starving. Right. Good job, Mabel. All right, we're gonna tell you about something real quick before the steak gets cold. We've got 822 gazillion recipes out there. Yes, we Where do. would you find them, Mrs. Farmer? I would go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Would you? Yes, I would, and I do. You know that. <laughs> you know, it was funny when we first started our cooking show. Been cooking for years, but we never wrote anything right. down. Right. And then people asked for a cookbook, and we had to start writing things down. So. Now we have everything documented for you. Everything mm -hmm. is there. So many recipes, so many how-tos right. around the farm, how to grow tomatoes, how to you know, right. build everything. fences, pig pens. Also, if you have not signed onto our Facebook page, we want you to do that. All you have to do is hit like, and you're our Facebook friend. We talk about recipes and all kinds of stuff there. And as we wish every mother out there a happy Mother's Day. That's right, I'm a mother. You're a mother. That's right, happy it, Mother's Day to me. It's time. Sadly to say, but it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. And happy Mother's Day. Mm. I want some more of that steak. This, this is really good asparagus. Mm.
To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.